Good evening. Welcome to Central High School for tonight's varsity <laughs> action between the Central Red Devils and the visiting Foxcroft Academy Ponies. My name is Zach White. I'm joined by Bob Beatham. We're going to be doing the commentary for you tonight. Mark Callen, he's going to be doing the camera work and producing for tonight's action. Bob, we've got two teams that we had on our channel in a broadcast earlier in the year. Very competitive game. Two teams that are right in the mix of everything in terms of seeding on their respective classes. This one is going to be fu some fun, Bob. It should be an outstanding ball game here tonight. A uh, couple of contrasting styles here tonight. We'll talk a little bit about uh, throughout the pregame. Uh, Foxcroft coming in here at 4-5. and five. They're currently ranked 6th in the uh, Class B North Heel Point standings. And then Central with the big win over Mananaka last night. Uh, after you know, following the links up in Lincoln, getting a 63-48 win last night, they're currently uh, seated fourth in a very deep and talented Class C at eight and two. So it should be a outstanding ball game here this evening. It should be indeed. We want to thank you for joining us on the Main Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. As Bob mentioned, this one's going to be some fun tonight, Bob. And one of the things you mentioned was this is a back-to-back -back for the Red Devils here. They played Madden Oak Academy last night. They were victorious in that matchup. But even more impressive, Izzy Allen reached that 1,000-point mark. So we want to give an opportunity, take an opportunity now to give a shout-out to Izzy Allen. It's an impressive accomplishment at the high school level for anybody. And I just want to point out that the Allen family has had three um, of the members of their family get 1,000 points here at Central High School. That's Sydney Allen, Simon Allen, and now Izzy Allen. So want to give credit there and big shout-out to them. Um, and she's going to be a key part of what we're going to see in the action tonight, Bob. She's a lot of what makes this team tick. And maybe just touch on her a little bit and see what talk about what you expect to see out of her and her respective teammates tonight as well. Yeah, really, uh, you know, really Izzy Allen's range is pretty much, once she gets the ball over half court, that's pretty much her shooting range. She's got uh, an outstanding score for them. Yeah, what was really impressive with her, too, is she scored a 1,000th point in her junior year. Considering the freshman season, there was no tournament, no postseason. They only played 12 games. So uh, I think they, they did have a little bit of a postseason tournament as well, but played a very abbreviated freshman year than this last year. And then, you know, this year's a scoring 1,000 points. So uh, very impressive there as well. Uh, one of the keys to the ball game for Central, and I don't think they're going to have any trouble getting up for tonight. It's a rivalry game against Foxcroft, but you had that big, you know, win last night against Man and Cook. As I said earlier, a team that beat them up there. Izzy Allen scoring a thousand point. Now you got to regroup. You know, let about 24 hours time and come back and play again. Yeah. And on Foxcroft's side, when we had these two teams in their previous matchup, they liked to get that game muddy and and create some yeah. chaos. And they thrive in those type of situations. And in that game. They did a great job of implementing their game plan and making it stick, and it made it for an incredibly competitive and quality basketball game in our local area. On their side, I expect to see that again. And I think what it's going to boil down to in this game tonight is, one, whoever controls the ball better on their side, they're going to have a real good chance in this one tonight. On the flip side and the inverse of that is if you get one of these clubs to force the game into their style, whether it's Foxcroft forcing you into some chaotic situations, or Central turning you over, getting easy baskets, working Izzy Allen. Busy with places to go. Boiled down to who implements their style in this one tonight. We're going to touch on that a little bit more in a few minutes, but we want to take the opportunity to thank you all again for joining us on the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. We're going to have more for you, but at this time, we're going to take it over to some commercial messages. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Heron Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. 
Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. We're busy with places to go, things to do, people to see. Let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services, bill pay, Apple pay, mobile deposit, and more. We're as close as your phone. Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. To Rouse Garage at Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive, right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. Welcome back to the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show waiting on tonight's action between the Central Red Devils and the visiting Foxcroft Academy Ponies. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you're watching this and you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel. It's completely free to do so. All you need is a YouTube profile and you can subscribe free of charge. You can stay up to date with all of our current live streams or you can go back and re-watch any of the games that we've been able to broadcast so far this year and in years prior. <coughs> Tons of stuff going on there. With the tournament coming up, we have a lot more plans. But this time, we want to thank a few other sponsors who have helped make these broadcasts free and accessible for everybody. Black Bear Crane is a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the same main with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast erection to modular home and communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. Also want to thank our replay sponsor. Main Mapping Company provides all of your land surveying, geomatics, engineering, and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter, Main Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as construction survey services statewide. Visit us at www.mainmappingco.com or check out our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. All right, Bob, we've got 523 remaining here in the pregame show. Want to run down a little bit more of the X's and O's on either side here. So a lot of our stats are courtesy of Maine basketball rankings, quality site over there. They use the same heel point math, but always make sure it's completely up to date. And coming into this one in Class C North on the girls' side, Central Red Devils are sitting 8-2 and two and at 4th place. Again, courtesy of Maine basketball rankings. And Foxcroft Academy, they're 4-5, and five, but they're at 7th in Class B. So that's a good spot to be in. And a win here tonight would all but guarantee them a home prelim. So this is a big heel point game tonight, Bob. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, Foxcroft Academy, again, they're 4-5. and five. A lot of teams have played 11-12 to 12 ball games. They've got a little bit behind on the schedule. have some games to... To make up here, uh, and then Central at eight and two, coming in here. You know, we talked about some of the keys to the ball game tonight. You know, for Foxcroft Academy, we talked a little bit earlier tonight. They really want to create some chaos. Uh, talking to Coach Russell earlier of Central, 
They had a 14 point lead in the second half and really kind of got caught up in Foxcroft's pace a little bit. Foxcroft turned them over a little bit. Yeah, they were able to, to really, you know, cut into the lead, you know, significantly. So Foxcroft Academy, they really want to attack the basket. They do a really good job of creating contact. Uh, when I saw them play John Baps last Tuesday, they shot 32 free throws against the uh, Crusaders that night. Now, another key for Foxcroft, too, they need to be able to convert from the foul line. John Baps was able to hang around a little bit that night because while they went to the foul line 32 times, they only made nine, so that's something they really want to improve on tonight is connecting to the free throw line. And their offensive rebounds are really going to be key for them tonight as well. Uh, they're going to start four guards, but they play a lot bigger than they are. Uh, Reigns girl really um, is a real catalyst for them, Abby Reigns. Mm. And then also they've got the big girl inside in uh, Abby Knapp as uh, 5'10 center, so... Again, she can be a real tough matchup uh, for Central as well. Yeah, and I, just to jump in on that point, the four guards matches the Pony style. They like to try to throw different looks at you defensively and get you in situations where they can possibly get a steal and get out in transition. But Abby Knapp at the forward or center position for these, this Pony side just is always solid, always reliable, going to get you a second, third chance opportunity on some cases with her offensive rebounding ability. So definitely look to the Abby Knapp being a key contributor tonight in that regard. Um, a little bit more just on the X's and O's real quickly before we send it to a replay and one more commercial before we get tonight's action going. Central, they're coming into this one averaging 63.9, so just under 64 points a game, and they're only giving up 34, 35.4 rather a game. So that's a pretty good scoring margin for them. And Foxtrot Academy, they're coming in averaging 44.3 points per game, allowing 45.2. Those stats courtesy of Maine Basketball Ranking. We want to thank them. And this time, we're going to take it to a replay of last night's action where we had these two ball clubs, but on the boys' side. We're going to send it to a replay. One more break, and we'll be back with you to wrap up the Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union pregame show. Kicked back out. Speed, he's going to have a clean look at a three. Makes a three. Side that's so prolific offensively and defensively as he comes away with the steal there. Transition staying with him, Bob, but Richard able to get it up to Crocker. Nice extra pass inside, Jack. That ball stolen away. Crocker. Transition passes it up to Oliveira. Oh, as I say it, Richard, he comes away with the steal. Transition up and in to be blocked. Jackson Smith came away with the rebound up and in for two. Back out to Richard. But, oh, those are like behind the back, between the legs. Out of the way, it looked good. Crocker to Oliveira. Rayfield. Pollock, he does end up with it. Nice shot fake, able to take. Nice dive by Adam Connor up and in for two. <laughs> Situation force a miss there, Bob. Smith to Munichek. Oh. He tried to go all the down with the rebound. Nice pass ahead. To oh, blocked out of bounds there. We're busy with places to go. Things to do, people to see. Let Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union make managing your money easy with mobile services, bill pay, Apple pay, mobile deposit, and more. We're as close as your phone. Now serving all of Piscataquis, Penobscot, and Somerset counties. Maine Highlands Federal Credit Union. Personal service, shared value. MHFCU.com. Welcome back. We're going to pass it over to the public address announcer here, and the national anthem will follow. Then we'll get the action started. Abuse of language, disorderly conduct, and poor sportsmanship of any kind are unacceptable anywhere on the campus of Central High School. We urge you to represent yourself and your school well by exercising good sportsmanship during tonight's contest. Please bear in mind that the Central High School is a tobacco free area. Tobacco products of any kind are prohibited on the CHF campus. Tonight's game brings the ponies from Foxcroft Academy to meet your Central Red Devils. <laughs> now let's get the start of the players for tonight's game. First, the visitors, the ponies from Foxcroft Academy. A senior, number one, Annie Rainey. A junior, number 11, Samantha Hawkinsworth. A sophomore, number 12,
We've had the starting lineups, national anthem. Only thing left to do, jump ball, get this game underway. Should be a good one here at Central, Bob. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, somebody we did not talk about the pregame, too, it's real key for Central High School. Um, Izzy Allen's got a younger sister. Uh, Mary runs the point for them and really uh, frees Izzy up a lot more to, to be a scorer. She doesn't have to worry about uh, bringing the ball up the floor and uh, really taking a load off her this year. Yeah, definitely a key cog and will be for years to come. So Allen and Knapp, they're going to enter the circle for tonight's jump ball. <laughs> we'll get the action underway here from Central. <coughs> Tip going to be controlled by Mary Allen. The Foxcroft Academy going to start man to man. And Izzy wasting no time. Izzy Allen on the three at the point attempt there. And an early jump ball is going to go back to the ponies. So one shot put up for Izzy Allen on that trip down. But ultimately going to be going the other way. It's going to be Reigns coming down with it. Primary ba uh, ball handler for this pony squad. Does a lot of positive things. Nice pass inside to her. Puts up a shot. Battling for the rebound now. Controlled by the ponies. Pass back out. Another strong drive. Pass along the baseline. Shot put up. Off the mark. Taken away by Mary Allen and the Devils. Going the other way now. Nice extra pass. Good transition defense. Clean look off the mark. So a couple decent shot opportunities in the early going here, Bob. But nothing falling for either side so far. Yeah, getting a couple of good looks for Central. Uh, pretty good look for Foxcroft Academy on their end. Uh, Foxcroft Academy with a couple shots down there. And I know they really want to get to the offensive board. Yeah, and... Ponies looking to push the tempo here before settling back into their offense. Reigns has it. She's guarded by Mary Allen, a very quality defender as well. Battle for the rebound, taken away by Central. Battle for the ball, but controlled by Allen. That was Daigle who brought down the rebound there. And Foxcroft off the miss is coming right after them with pressure, as we talked about earlier in the broadcast. And nice battle for the ball by Austin Fort, but looked like she had a foot on the end line. It's going to be out of bounds, but great energy in the early going. By Sam Osenfort, nice <laughs> effort there, trying to get her team the ball back. Pass inside, Izzy Allen to Mary Allen, blocked away by Abby Knapp. Looks like we're going to have another jump. This is going to go back to Central. Both sides battling hard early on here, Bob. Yeah, really just what we 
uh, thought we were going to see early in the ball game. Now Central, on the other hand, playing more of a saggy man-to-man -man in the paint, uh, really trying to contain uh, Foxcroft from driving to the basket. Izzy Allen, speaking of driving, she gets all the way to the foul line, into the paint, throws up a runner, fouled, going to the line, chance at two. And Central, I'm sure, too, they don't want to settle just for perimeter jump shots. If they're going to come out and overplay and, and really be aggressive, they want to take advantage of that and try to attack the basket. And Allen good on her first. One thing we saw the last time these two clubs were paired against one another was a lot as Allen knocks in the second look as well. A lot of different looks defensively. A lot of different zones, full court pressure, man-to-man, -man, you name it, it was played defensively. <laughs> So far, both sides electing, electing to stay in the man-to-man -man as Knapp puts up a shot from the elbow. Off the mark, but offensive rebound to the Ponies before Bob Beatham controls it on our broadcast side here. Still going to get it to the official. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Bob getting involved I, on the action here. I put a rebound. I thought Hallie Page might just her. go ahead and start her own fast break there. Well, you, maybe you would have gotten an assist. Maybe. I could have gotten an assist for that. Meanwhile, on the inbounds play there, Bob, looks like Mary Allen got called for the hold. So that's going to be her first. Last time these clubs went against each other, there was some foul trouble for Central. Reigns, nice move inside, but a good block by Mary Allen, and she comes away with the board. Pressure stays on her in the full court. Trying to dribble through it before getting the ball to Izzy Allen. Looks like they're trying to double there, Bob, in the half court. Going to step through, put up a shot, and make a shot. Great move that time by Izzy Allen, splitting two defenders. Going to step through, put up a shot, and make And it's going to be Olsen Fort bringing the ball down for the Ponies now. She's going to get all the way into the lane. And that's going to be Mary Allen's second foul. Two shots coming from the line here. And this is really what Central couldn't afford to have happen tonight, is to get, you know, one or both the Allen girls into, into foul trouble. But Foxcroft doing a really good job attacking the basket and getting to the rim. Yep, first one good from Osenfort. And that's how the scoring gets started tonight for the Ponies. And replacing Mary Allen is Gray, Cindy Gray. Second attempt from the lo line, no good. Izzy Allen comes away with it before it's tipped away. Abby Knapp gets it back. Player control foul. Great job by Riley Speed, able to step across there, take the contact, and Abby Knapp, that's going to be her first foul of the game. Yeah, Speed did a nice job rotating over and taking the charge. And you see the Ponies, they're now out in full court pressure here. <coughs> so it'll be interesting to see how Central adjusts here with Mary Allen out of the game. Ball played it back inside. Travel call there. That goes against Witty, but that was good ball movement. You had Daigle to Witty on the inside. That's the right idea. And you know, Bob, if Central can get a second, third, or if you're lucky, even a fourth scoring option involved and take some pressure away from the primary scoring option being Izzy, you're going to open up a lot of lanes, and it's only going to do positive things. Shot put up there, short, but Annie Rain, she comes away with a rebound. Plays it inside to Knapp. No good. Riley Speed comes away with it. Well, taken away again by Knapp. Didn't even have time to write down the rebound in my book before that ball got taken away. Yeah, you can't relax offensively at any point if you're central because even on the miss, they're going to come after you with pressure. And that's one of the things we expected to see in Abby Knapp now putting up a shot from the elbow. No good on that attempt. The Ponies are getting clean looks. Speaking of, Izzy Allen to the rim. Yeah, great pass and nice look by Riley Speed that time to find Izzy Lally. Izzy Allen cutting to the basket. And she's got all six for Central so far in this one. Olsen Fort picks up her dribble over to Reigns. <laughs> Guarded tough by Izzy Allen. Three put up. That's Page off the glass. No good. Rebound taken down there by Witty. All the way at the other end, Riley Speed. And Whitty. just reverse that time. Izzy Allen with the assist to Riley the Speed. We're going to have a timeout by Foxcroft Academy. And that's going to take us to a timeout and a break from us. We'll rejoin you in a moment. Cool. And stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 
Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Yeah. Welcome back here to Central High School. Eight to one's our score, Bob. Everything's going right for the Red Devils early on here. It is. I mean, they've been able to share the basketball so far. Uh, Foxcroft Academy, not a particularly good perimeter shooting team, but even though it's down eight to one, they've been able to like, get some good looks at the basket. Just uh, shots not falling right now, and uh, we'll we'll see what happens here the rest of the night. Olsen Ford was looking for the backdoor cut there. Reigns has it. Shot put up. That's going to go over the back of the backboard. It's going to go back to Central. Ponies are going to stay in this full court pressure. So maybe the only thing that hasn't gone Central's way is the two fouls against Mary Allen. That's been pretty much the only thing not going their way. Look for the Ponies to see if they can do something about that now. Good defense on this possession. Allen trying to battle for the ball, taken away by Page. Page over to Reigns. Reigns, clean look off from the foul line. Rebound taken by Riley Speed. Ball stolen away by Page. Able to get some turnovers early on, just not able to quite capitalize here in the early going. And that ball stolen away by Riley Speed. Abby Knapp trying to contend in transition. Ball batted around but finds its way to Allen. Ball batted around but finds its way to Allen. And Izzy Allen, she's got eight on the game so far. Yeah, and Riley Speed really making a lot happen defensively for Central and has had a couple nice assists as well. Has indeed. Good defense on this possession as well. Looks like a 2-3 zone now, Bob, for Central. That ball tipped. Izzy Allen got a hand on it. It's going to be a steal for Central. Izzy Allen in transition. Going to be foul. Chance for two from the line. Yeah, try to I'll try to pick up uh, what Central's doing defensively next time down. You know, Foxcroft didn't have any cutters. I don't know if it was 2-3 uh, or just a sagging man mm. that it, time. It might have been a sagging man, as you mentioned earlier. This Pony Squad, you know, not just <laughs> perimeter shooting as Izzy Allen knocks down the first. Perimeter shooting, not their desired form of offense. Much better at getting to the rim and creating contact that way um, as Izzy Allen puts up the second off the mark. So maybe it is just a sagging man, but it, it almost mimics a 2-3. So you can kind of attack it in a similar sense. Shot put up in transition. Rebound taken down inside. Good defense on the interior. Pass played back out. Another offensive rebound by the Ponies here. That was Reigns who came away with it. And it was Smith who had originally brought it down. At the AR 2 3 zone. Yep, that time shot put up. Off the mark again, but almost saved by Olsen Fort. Now Allen passed down court. Shot put up, shot put in by Olsen for it. Now Allen passed down court, shot put up. And that was Witty there on the two. Nice look by Izzy Allen on that try as well. Pony still looking for their first field goal of the game. Gonna have a foul called here. See who that one gets whistled against, but it's gonna give Smith the chance for two from the line. Probably going to go against Riley Speed. Uh, just a little little slow on the rotation that time to help on uh, Smith. And Smith off the glass. Good on the first attempt here. Madison Pinkham checking in for Central. Smith second from the line, good as well. So all the points coming from the free throw line so far in this one for the Ponies. 13-3 our score, knocked out of play, going to stay with Central. Speed going to take it out. Nice cut to the ball by Allen. 130 remaining here in this opening quarter of action. Allen looking for the step back there, but it gets intercepted. Transition opportunity off the mark, but foul going to be called on Madison Pinkham, newly into the game. I have another chance to get a ball here, Bob. It's just 
Basketball is just hanging out in front of our booth. <coughs> Kimball eventually ends up with it. They're actually not going to call that a shooting foul. So it was after the possibly, yeah, after the shot. Yeah, yep. After the shot was attempted. So still in this 2-3 zone is Central. Olsen Fort, she puts up a look off the mark, rebounded by Speed on the far side. So Speed, two points, and adding some rebounds to her night as well. Ball batted around back to the Ponies. Unofficially, of course, as this game gets high energy hey. back and forth, but I have her down for 2.3 rebounds early on, so great energy being displayed. Pass inside, that's Annie Reigns. Layup attempt up and in. Yeah, nice move inside and good body control that time by Annie Reigns with the basket. And the first field goal for the Ponies comes with about a minute left on the clock. We're now under 48 seconds remaining in the quarter. 13 to 5 our score. That's going to be a foul against Reigns there. You'd see... Speed kind of recoils. Reigns trying to get to the basketball there, but unsuccessful on that attempt. So a couple substitutions set to check in now for the Ponies. That's going to be Day and Hill. Addie Day and Olivia Hill checking in now. Day played a good portion of the JV game tonight earlier. Played very well. <coughs> Speaking of playing well, Allen trying to go to the rim, but a great defensive effort. Knocked the ball out of her hands there on her attempt. Pass inside, that's Smith. Going to the rim, off the mark. Rebound by Speed, give her another one. Battle for the ball, no call made. Now Allen's gonna have it in her hands with 15 seconds remaining on the quarter. She's gonna take a look at a three, off the mark. Battle for the board. Actually gonna be called a foul. See who that one goes against. If that's Speed, it's her second. She was involved, but yeah, that is Riley Speed's second foul of the game. Now you have Mary Allen with two and Riley Speed with two. Day bringing the basketball down. That's actually going to be a travel, and that's not what you want with 4.6 remaining on the clock, Bob. I think she was looking for somebody to pass it to, kind of passed it off the dribble a little bit, then hesitated to turn the ball over on yeah. the travel. Looked like got stuck between trying to go quick enough to end the quarter, but not too quick in that situation. Allen, step back. Off front iron, off the mark. They lead 13-5 to the Red Devils over the Ponies. We're going to take it to a quick commercial break and rejoin you for the second quarter. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut, all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that's made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Welcome back here to Central High School as we prepare for this second quarter of action. 13 to 5, our current score. Nice opening quarter there by the Red Devils, but some foul trouble towards the end. Mary Allen, she's back onto the court now. Riley Speed back onto the court now. But they each have two fouls here, Bob. Yeah, I think they're going to be real careful right now, too. They're going to sit in that, uh, still come out through three zone here. And shot put up at the rim, off the mark. Ali Smith inside, battling for it. Two offensive rebounds and two points. Mark Alley Smith inside, battling for it. Two offensive rebounds and two points. That replay brought to you courtesy of Maine Mapping Company, our replay sponsor. Mary Allen trying to get all the way to the rim, passes it back out to Izzy Allen. Shot put up. Shorten off the mark there on that attempt. Sydney Gray trying to get involved in the action there. Substitution set to check back in. Returning to the action is going to be Daigle replacing Witty. 
Pony's now bringing the ball down. Got the game back within six here. Page, clean look from our corner. Off the mark, Izzy Allen battling for it. It's going to be off of Allen, back to the Ponies. So rebounding this quarter, brief sample size here as we're only at 7.14 remaining. And that's going to be a team control foul. I had to stop my sentence there for a moment to take scope of the action. It looked like that one went against Smith. It's going to go against Smith. Uh, it'll give Central a first down and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was going against the offense there. Headed back the other way. Five fouls apiece on either side. So quickly approaching one-and-one one territory. Pass inside through the hands of Allen. But Allie Smith was the last one to get a fingertip on it. It's going to be Red Devil ball underneath their own basket. Ball played out to the top of the key. That's Mary Allen. He's had to sit a majority of this one with the foul trouble. Took a shot at the rim there off the mark. Rebounded by Annie Reigns. Yeah, got a little off balance that time with the shot. And then uh, good rebound for Foxcroft Academy. And now they're back in business. Yeah, trying to work through this 2-3 zone. With Mary Allen on the court. Becomes very active. Layup attempt inside. Off the mark. Ball batted out of bounds. Rebounding woes continue this quarter for Central. They're defending well out of this 2-3. They are. You know, Foxcroft's doing a nice job, too, and they're getting some pretty good looks out of it. And nice shot there put up. That's going to be a three-point attempt and make by Sam Alsenfort. And, you know, that might be what you need to start to try to stretch this defense. Mary Allen all the way to the rim. Circus shot up and in. Defense. Mary Allen all the way to the rim. Circus shot. That replay brought to you courtesy of Maine Mapping Company. That layup put up by Allie Smith off the mark. And that's going to go against Allie Smith as well on our end. Could be her second. Uh, Foxcroft Academy, though, against that 2-3 zone. Last couple times down, did a nice job. They get the ball at the high post to Austin Fort and fed uh, Smith down low underneath. And Allie Smith's going to check out of this ballgame with the two fouls at the moment. Knapp's going to check back in to replace her, but... Great minutes off the bench for Allie Smith in the early going here. Izzy Allen now getting a lot of attention over to Daigle. So the corner for Mary Allen. Shot put up high off the mark, but Riley Speed came away with a rebound. Off the mark on the second attempt for Riley Speed. Unofficial have her down for five rebounds so far in this one. To go along with those two first quarter points. Extra pass inside. Off the mark, and he reigns the rebound. Off the mark. Rebound again, almost. But Izzy Allen able to battle, control the dribble, and keep the possession alive. That was effort and intensity on display right there. Now trying to get all the way to the rim. Throws it up the left. They have an opportunity from the line coming. Hey, you talk about Izzy Allen's rage from the perimeter, but she said a really nice job tonight, too, attacking the basket. And, uh, and she's going to get to the foul line. This would be a fifth and sixth and tenths of the ball game. Also, that's Paige's second foul of the game. Allen good on the first attempt there. And Central's going to be shooting free throws from the rest of the way out in this half of action. So now the ponies are over the limit. Knapp tried to hand that one off, but Riley Speed got a glove on it. She's going the other way. Tried to get all the way to the rim there. Just dragged the pivot foot in that situation. Could be a travel headed back the other way. You've got a number of names doing impressive things on either side, but Riley Speed's been right near the top of it tonight with her effort defensively and rebounding the basketball alike. Reigns over to Page, back into Reigns. Got to have a clean shot at the rim, up and in for two. So Annie Reigns gets the ponies within five. Mary Allen, she's going to take a pull up off the mark. Battle for the board. Tipped out of play by Izzy Allen. going to go back to the ponies. Checking back in is Madison Pinkham. Going to be replacing Sydney Gray. And now, Bob, you look and see... Central's come out on the full court press. Looks like a 2-2-1 here. 
A little 2-2-1 full court pressure here for uh, Central High School. And that's going to bring Day into the game, replacing Page. Page does have those two fouls, so sort of a wise substitution there. Reigns now trying to break through this pressure, but tipped. Pinkham had it, but it was tipped away, and it ended up in the hands of Abby Knapp. Ponies now electing to slow down for a moment. Ball was tipped from behind by Izzy Allen and almost tipped away by Riley Speed. Shot put up far side. That was Alston Fort that had a look at the rim. Daigle tried to fight through traffic. Andy Reigns comes away with it. That's going to be a charge taken by Riley Speed. Foul against Andy Reigns. Not free throws, but another great defensive play by Riley Speed. Yeah, and she's really stepped up big tonight for Central, especially the defensive end. And she's had some real nice assists, too, uh, passing the basketball. Yeah, and that's also the second foul against Annie Reigns. So multiple players on either side dealing with two fouls. And that's going to be a foul against Izzy Allen on the interior. Trying to create an advantageous position on the interior. We got a little too physical in that situation, Bob, but that's only her first. When you extend out with the arm like that, they're generally going to call the foul. We've had a number of offensive fouls this game, accounting for either side's total foul call count, I should say. That ball stolen in transition by Mary Allen, and that's going to be a foul. Not one you want to commit that far from your own basket as we're going to have free throws here. But again, for Fox off, it's going to be a risk-reward situation, too. Again, they're going to pressure. They're going to, you know, sometimes you're going to commit fouls like that when you play, you know, the style that they do. And it's worked out a few times in this opening half of action. They've been able to get those turnovers. And that comes with the territory, as you mentioned, as Mary Allen good on the first. It comes with the territory of trying to muddy up the game. Yeah, and again, if that's the way you're going to play, if that's the style you want to try to play, which is, is what they do, you also can't in turn be upset with the kid because they can never fall like that, you know, 75 feet to basket. And Bob, I have the Red Devils down to 7 of 8 from the free throw line here in this first half of action. They are. And that ball tipped away. Almost stolen by Izzy Allen. And we're going to have a timeout taken by Coach Ladd and the Ponies. We'll take it with them and rejoin you. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive, right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. To Riles Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Riles Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Riles Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Where's my cue? Welcome back here at Central High School. 19 to 12, our current score. Ponies have done a good job of getting back into this game after kind of a shaky start early on there. It was 8 to 1 at one point, and you know, ever since that point in the game, they've done a real good job balancing their offensive attack. As I say it, travel and turnover forced, and a lot of it, in my opinion, Bob, has been the aggression out of the defense from Central here. They've been playing a lot of kind of subtle 2-3, but when you get them in a full-court pressure or half-court pressure, it's creating some chaos. And that was a real good uh, adjustment by Coach Russell out of the timeout coming with that little half-court pressure. It was indeed. Forced a turnover right there. Allen had it for a moment, thought about it. Pass was played over to Pinkham before it ended back in the hands of Allen. Good defense at the top of the key by Page. She has the two fouls. Mary Allen took a shot at the rim. Off the mark. Rebounded inside by Pinkham. Now Daigle had a look at it. Drove to the rim before Annie Reigns ended up with it. Nice extra pass. But through the hands of Page. 
didn't end up the way they wanted it to in that situation, but that was a perfectly run transition opportunity. So, I mean, you want the two points, you don't want to settle for anything less, but everything was right except that final bit of execution there. And Foxcroft's probably fine with turning the ball over 20 times, provided they can turn the other team over 20 to 25 times. As Allen was off on the attempt there, ball ended back in the hands of Mary Allen before Izzy Allen took a look at it. And it was Smith who came away with the rebound. And tip from behind by, I'm going to say, guess who? Riley Speed. She's been all over the place defensively. I don't dare make the pun, but I'm going to do it anyway. She's living up to that last name. She flies all over this court, and you're seeing it on full display. She is a definite workhorse, that's for sure. Ball played into Smith. Back to Osenfort. Annie Range. she's going to have a clean look at it. Too strong off the glass, but she gets her own rebound. Up and in for two. Range. she's going to have a clean look at it. Too strong off the glass, but she gets her own rebound. Replay brought to you courtesy Main Mapping Company as Izzy Allen plays it off to Daigle. Gets the rebound, but it was tipped out of her hands. Ended up with Knapp. And it's going to go back to Central after being tipped away. But you see how active Annie Reigns is. I mean, shot that ball to top of the key was the first one there. I mean, that's how you follow your shot in basketball. And offensive rebounds by the Ponies, keeping them alive so far in this one. And she gets a lot of points, too, just following her shot and getting the offensive board. And Knapp, she ended up with a hand on that one, tipped away. Annie Reigns, transition opportunity, avoids contact. Off the mark, Allie Smith comes away with the offensive board before Riley Smith controls it for the Red Devils. Tipped away, stolen away. Another shot put up, another offensive rebound. And two more points for Annie Reigns. Yeah, she's really been the aggressor here in this second quarter and really uh, brought Foxcroft back uh, into this ball game. And they're within three. Ball tipped away. Another turnover. Another transition opportunity. Annie Reigns with the left off the mark. Olsen Fort, she had a toe on the line. We actually have the perfect vantage point for that one. She nearly saved it. It's a three-point game with 128 remaining in this second quarter of action here. It's an 11 to six quarter in favor of the Ponies so far. Central still has that lead. But a few turnovers in a row on a couple of offensive possessions here. Izzy Allen looking to change that. Gets all the way to her spot, gets two points. Izzy Allen looking to change that. Gets all the way to her spot. Get Replay brought to you courtesy of Main Mapping Company. His ball played inside before being tipped into the hands of Izzy Allen. Now under 50 seconds to play. Ball thrown away, finds its way to Riley Speed, to Mary Allen. Gonna try to take that one all the way to the rim. Gonna have an opportunity for two from the line. Whether it was called in the act of shooting or not. Because we're in the double bonus now. That foul's going to go against Abby Knapp. That's going to be her third. Oh, well, good <laughs> eyes there, Bob. That's a massive foul to end this first half. Mary Allen off on the first attempt there. Day and I believe that's Kimball, number 12, checking in. And Pinkham's going to check in for Mary Allen next opportunity. Get her out with the foul trouble. She's off on the second one. So an empty trip from the line there. You don't say that often with this central club. Is foul there against Izzy Allen. That's her second. And this is going to be free throw opportunities for Day at the other end. It's going to put them in the one and one. And we'll see if Coach Russell might. Although they Central might go last shot uh, down here the next time too. Just to kind of preserve their players as well. That would definitely be the desired outcome, but that's easier said than done against this tough, you know, Foxcroft defense. They're going to try to make that as difficult as possible, but that is definitely the, the desired outcome, I would assume, here in this situation. Day's first attempt from the line, off the mark. Smith came away with a rebound. Off the mark. Ball batted around. Off the hands of Day going the other way. 
So Allie Smith off the bench. I've got her down for four points, five rebounds. Foxcroft going to drop back half court man to man here. And Bob, as you mentioned, you got to assume this is a one shot situation for Central as the ball was played into Pinkham. Back They're going to want to get the ball in Izzy Allen's hands here with about 10 seconds, and then they're not, not going to be afforded no. the opportunity no. there, Bob. Is turnover, ball back to the ponies. Going to say they would probably go one four low set out of that if they had the opportunity, but we'll. Foxcroft will get the final shot here. You can afford it. Ball over to Page. Good court awareness by the Ponies there. Three seconds on the clock. Page going to have to take a look at it. She does from deep. Off oh. the glass. Off the rim twice. But ultimately off the mark. 21-16 our score headed into halftime. Central Eats. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Herring Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Call and stop by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Rouse Garage in Dover Foxtrot to discover the difference between walking into a local dealership versus a big dealer that uses high pressure tactics the second you drive onto the lot. From selling you a vehicle to servicing your vehicle, Rouse Garage will treat you like you are the only customer. While you're there, check out their state of the art automatic car wash. Rouse Garage, call them at 207 564 3434 or visit them at 191 East Main Street in Dover Foxcroft, Maine. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center is a practice that specializes in treating a variety of different conditions. We treat patients daily who suffer from chronic lower back and neck pain, headaches, repetitive stress disorders, work injuries, sports injuries, and more. Dr. Rick and our entire team at Ames Chiropractic are excited to welcome you to our brand new Bangor office located at 43 Longview Drive, right behind Olive Garden. Ames Chiropractic Wellness Center, helping you to naturally feel and be your very best. And welcome to the Black Bear Crane Halftime Report. And our halftime guest this evening is Ethan Witte, a senior here at Central High School. And you are the team manager for both the boys' basketball team and also help out with the girls' basketball team. So tell us a little bit about how you got involved with uh, managing and also some of the, your duties as a team manager here at Central High School. So I started managing my sixth grade year at Central Middle School. I knew I wanted to be a part of the basketball team, but I didn't enjoy playing, so I'm like, What's better than being the manager? So I've been manager ever since sixth grade. This is my seventh year, and this year the girls needed a manager. I'm like, hey, I'm already the manager for the boys. Might as well be the manager for the girls. Sounds great. And talk to us a little bit. Some people that are watching may not understand what the role of the team manager is, so maybe you know, talk to us a little bit about uh, some of the duties that you have and things you're responsible for. Yeah, so for away games, for the boys and the girls, I tend to do the book at the score table. And for the home games, I'm either taking pictures for the teams, doing stats, or whatever the coaches need. That's, that's great. Uh, where do you think uh, your involvement in sports might take you in the future? Well, so I plan on attending University of Maine Presque Isle next year. And I hope to manage their men's basketball team just to stay involved and do something I enjoy. That's, that's great. And again, the uh, coach of the University of Maine Presque Isle, a Central High School alumnus, uh, Dan Kane. So you certainly got a connection there being a Central graduate uh, this spring. Uh, tell us a little bit about maybe some of the other activities you're involved in the Central. We talked a little bit out in the hall earlier, and you're certainly very well-rounded. So maybe talk to the viewers a little bit about some of the other activities you're involved with. Yeah, so I'm very involved within the school community. 
I'm the president of the Key Club here, uh, vice president of the National Honor Society, and also class, uh, class vice president, along with stage manager for Drama Club. That's great. And obviously, you're a little bit ahead of where I was in high school because... Um, now, maybe if you had added my grade point average of both semesters, I might have been able to get in the National Honor <laughs> Society, but no, it wasn't that bad, but probably definitely not what uh, the level that you're at, certainly. Uh, so, about the drama club here at uh, Central High School, you were saying that they've got a really good drama program. What are some of the uh, plays that you've been involved with? And talk to us a little bit about uh, your spring uh, play coming up. Yeah, so for my freshman year, we did a play that was like about water. We had many ensemble scenes. Uh, we won regionals that year. Uh, this past fall, I was actually a horse for our uh, fall play. You were a horse. Now, how, I was how a did, horse. How did you play a horse? Uh, I neighed. That was my only line. I had to neigh. Um, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> but I had to wear a horse come head. On, get, come on, give us a neigh. We need a neigh. Come on. <laughs> so bad, but... You know, I don't wear a horse head. Uh, yeah, the director is like, in videos I've seen, there was a horse, and everyone, we're sitting there, I was just tech, they're like, does Ethan want to be the horse? And I'm like, it's my senior year, mine as well. And currently right now, we're working on our festival play, which we'll compete in March. Um, it's Shuttersome, we're doing different uh, works of art from Edgar Allan Poe. Really looking forward for that. Great. Now, you said you wanted to go to the University of Maine at Prescott. Um, tell us a little bit about what you want to study and, and why you want to study it. Yeah, so I plan on studying elementary education. For the longest time, I wanted to go into business. But this year, I worked with some kids, do some volunteer work. And I'm like, maybe this is something I want to do. I have seven cousins ranging from 1 to 12, so I'm around them a lot. And I'm like, I enjoy working with kids, and I can connect well with kids, and I want to take that to the next level and teach them. Great. And any involvement with sports, maybe post-college? Uh, uh, you've certainly been a team manager, been involved in a lot of things. A lot of those things you can kind of translate into maybe the next level and possibly get involved. Uh, any Maybe broadcast with us someday. So, if that's uh, something you'd be interested so actually, in. um, outside of basketball, I have played golf for – five years now I started it and it's just a hobby I like so I'll definitely be active playing golf maybe consider playing golf for the University of Maine Presque Isle and just see where I can go with that great and you also uh, do photography work as well so how did you get involved with that so I picked up photography as a hobby a few years back I started taking pictures for my sister for softball along with her teammates and I just took it to basketball figured not many photographers out here, so the team would appreciate it, and it's fun. I enjoy doing it. And the last question I have for you, uh, you've been awesome tonight, by the way. So last question I have, what is it that you most enjoy about being the manager for the girls' and boys' teams here at Central High School? So one reason why I'm the manager of the girls' team is, yes, they needed a manager, but also my twin sister, a senior on varsity. Uh, it's nice to be able to watch her play this final year of high school. And for the boys, I just enjoy helping the coaches. And I just, something I really enjoy doing. And I just wanted to do it my last year. Actually, I got one more question, though. Okay. What, what is it that you're most looking forward to? Again, uh, Central's going to be in the mix in the tournament in Bangor in about four weeks. Actually, four weeks from tonight, we get started. Uh, what is it that you most enjoy about tournament time? Just getting the students out. We get a good student section and just seeing all the fans support us, support us, the other teams. And sometimes the competition is fun. I enjoy seeing it. It's Excellent. good for the sports community. All right. This is Ethan Witte, uh, student manager here at Central High School. Appreciate the time here this evening. Best of luck for the rest of the season. Thank you. All right. Welcome. Thank you. Brothers Meats is a family-owned and operated business located in Guilford, Maine. We operate a local retail meat market along with a slaughterhouse, smokehouse, and processing plants. Heron Brothers has all sorts of meats from already pre-cut all the way to cutting it right on the spot for you. Also, while you're there, don't forget to try their wicked good beef jerky that is made right in Guilford, Maine. Call them at 207-876-4395 or visit them at 346 Water Street Monday through Saturday 
from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Welcome back here, and thank you for joining us on the Black Bear Crane Halftime Show. Great halftime interview there, Bob. Great job. Um, real quickly, want to run down some of those stats from that first half of action. Mary Allen played most of that second quarter, but was dealing with some foul trouble. She still has four points on the game. Izzy Allen leads all scores with 13. Alexis Witte, she has two. And Riley Speed, she has two. Annie Range, she's got eight for the Ponies, leading them. Sam Olsenfort, she's got four. And Allie Smith, she's got uh, two, uh, four on the game as well. And we get the action started here. Start this second half. Mary Allen and the Red Devils, they're going to get the ball to begin. Pass played over to Daigle. Ponies are coming out in this traditional man-to-man. -man. Daigle puts up a runner off the mark. Battle for the rebound. Taken down by the Ponies. That was Kimball on the rebound. Also, Allie Smith had a great first half. Getting the start in the second half here. For the Ponies, Knapp picks up her third foul late in that first half of action. Day also getting the start in this second half of action. Yeah, Central's gone back man-to-man -man here to start the second half. <laughs> Kimball the drive, pass into Day. Back to Kimball, put up the runner off the mark. Smith came away, the rebound, plus the harm. Day, back to Kimball, put up the runner off the mark. Smith came away, the... So Allie Smith continuing her impressive night. Chance to add to it here. Going to attempt to convert this three-point play. Free throw off the mark. Rebound taken by Izzy Allen. She's so dangerous in transition. Pass over to Riley Speed for the easy two. <laughs> That's how you go coast to coast in high school basketball. Just give the ball to Izzy Allen, make things happen. Smith has it, giving it back to Andy Rains, but it's stolen away by Riley Speed. In transition now, extra pass over to Izzy Allen for the easy two. And In transition now, extra pass over to Izzy Allen for the easy two. Riley Speed doing a little bit of everything here, Bob. Yeah, I haven't kept traffic of assist tonight, but there's probably fourth or fifth assist tonight. And Kimball knocks down long range two. Keeps the scoring within five. <laughs> for the Ponies, 25-20, 6.15 remaining in this third quarter. Daigle has it, looking for the back cut to Mary Allen, nothing home, Izzy Allen gonna take it all the way to the rim, left hand up and in for two. Izzy Allen called her own number on that one, great blow by and left hand layup at the rim. <laughs> the 17 of their 27 so far. Day over to Kimball. Back to Page. Back to Day. Looking to keep the offense going for the Ponies here. Into Smith. Reigns trying to find something on the drive. Good active hands by Daigle. Almost got the steal. Erratic shot thrown up there by Reigns. And it was Riley Speed who came down with the rebound. Izzy Allen all the way to the rim for two. Riley Speed who came down with the rebound. Izzy Allen all the way to the rim. Unofficially, I've got Riley Speed down for seven boards. Doing a great job on that end. And Izzy Allen doing a great job as always on the offensive end. Following the night against Madden Cook Academy where she reached the 1,000 point mark in her junior season. Active hands tipped out of play by Riley Speed. Checking into the game is Austin Fort. Going to be replacing Day, who again, I just want to mention, you mentioned this earlier, I believe, Bob, but Day played a majority of that JV action, and she's doing a great job out here in varsity action as well, so double duty for Day today. Yeah, Foxcroft Academy goes pretty deep into their bench. And Kimball with the nice shot there. She's made a couple from that spot in this half of action. Adds to her night there. Shot opportunity off the mark. Good battle for the rebound. Witte had it for a moment, but Kimball came away with it. Transition now. Page threw it up off the mark. 
Going to be a technical foul called. That's going to go against Mary Allen. You know, I was on, I was checking my book there, Bob, for a minute, so I dropped my head, and uh, the crowd was reacting. So there might have been something that occurred there that I didn't quite catch on to that Mary Allen took exception with. There might have been a maybe thought that uh, the girl for uh, Foxcroft Academy, uh, Paige, thought she might have traveled maybe. But there's going to be free throws. And that's also, it's Mary Allen's third foul. Yeah. Smith's going to step to the free throw line, and she's going to be the free throw shooter here. Smith off on the first. Now, were they saying she was in the act of shooting, or is we, are we shooting the technical free well, throw now? Well, there was a conversation there, Bob, as Smith banks in the second. And apparently, that was the technical free throw. Yep. And Smith is 3 of 5 from the line tonight. So the ball goes back to the Ponies. Pass played inside, but too strong there. Out of bounds, turnover, going back to Central. Still a six-point margin here. Central, they lead 29-23, 4-10 remaining early in this third quarter. Mary Allen still on the court. Just could be something to watch with the three fouls there. And that's going to be knocked out of bounds by Riley Speed. Back to the Ponies here. Annie, Ra- Annie Rains Ivor has that being her fifth rebound of the game unofficially. She's doing a little bit of everything so far tonight for this Pony squad. Ball played into Kimball. Riley Speed in tow, looking for that steal. Over to Paige. She's going to take a look at it. That's going to be off the mark. Going to travel out of bounds. Ball goes back to Central. I liked how Ethan uh, neighed like a horse in the interview. That that sounds all, like that was great. We all liked that part of it, Bob. That'll definitely be a clip for later on, I am sure. Hey, if Bill Walton can bark like a dog, then we can we can have a horse that neighs, yeah, right? Absolutely. Riley Speed able to control the ball on our near side. Nice extra pass inside. Allen to Daigle. Able to control the ball on our near side. Nice extra pass inside. Nice look by Mary Allen on the drive. Found Daigle for the easy two. And that's why you play her even with that third foul. Can impact the game in so many ways. Kimball shot fake. She's made a few from the perimeters. Respecting it now are the Red Devils as that ball is stolen away by Daigle. Pass ahead to Mary Allen, settling the tempo for the moment. Speed now has it. Over to Daigle, handoff to Mary Allen, who hands it off to Izzy Allen. Had a good look at a three. It's going to be knocked out of bounds back to the Ponies. Kimball plays it into Reigns. The Ponies trying to get this game back into their favor. It's only an eight-point margin. Plenty of time to do it. Central's done a nice job, though, particularly the second half, too, keeping them in the half court, too, and not letting any runouts. Ball played into Smith. Annie Reigns shot fake. Gets all the way to the rim. Off the mark. Rebound taken away by Daigle, and that's going to be a foul on the far end. Daigle, been impressive this second half. Bringing down some rebounds and getting involved in scoring action as well. Abby Knapp, she's going to check in, replacing Allie Smith. Knapp picked up her third foul late into that first half of action. She returns now. And although she just exited, I want to again say Allie Smith has just been very impressive so far in this game. Speaking of impressive, Izzy Allen for three. Impressive so far in this game. Speaking of impressive, Izzy Allen. Timeout taken here. 
We're going to keep it here and take the opportunity to thank some of the sponsors who have helped make these broadcasts free and accessible. <laughs> if you haven't already and you're watching on YouTube, please consider subscribing. Completely free to do so. All you need is a YouTube account. You can keep up with all of our live broadcasts. Black Bear Cranes, a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman. Covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, ceiling precast erection to modular home communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Also, Maine Mapping has been our replay sponsor of the season and of tonight's action. I want to thank them as well. So it's going to be Pony's ball. I believe that timeout was taken by Coach Jamie Russell. So maybe a defensive shift or just something he wanted to relay to his squad there. 34-23 yard score. They're going back to the 2-3 zone. Yeah, and is he on nine points on the quarter? She's got 22 on the game. 22 of the team's 34. Kimball the drive. Pass played out to range. Thought about it. Finally takes it. Good looking shot just off the mark. Mary Allen the rebound. Nice extra pass inside. Is he Allen for two? Nice extra pass inside. Is he Allen for two? Good find, good shot by the Allens there. And really, that fast break was started by a quick shot from Foxcroft Academy. Central was able to get the long rebound and get it out in transition. And rebounded on the far side by Riley Speed. Brings down another one. In transition, wide open, Mary Allen for an easy two. Timeout going to be taken by Coach Ladd and the Ponies. We're going to take it with them and rejoin you. Goal is stopped by Kimball Insurance for all your insurance needs. Whether it be auto, home, farm, business, life, or health insurance, we have you covered. Our agents are ready to serve you and help you with your needs. Visit us at Kimball Insurance at 91 Main Street in Sangerville, Maine, online at KimballInsuranceAgency.com, or visit us on Facebook to see what we can do for you. Kimball's, your insurance is our business. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Welcome back to Central High School following the timeout taken by Coach Ladd and the Ponies. And it looks like Central, they're coming out of the full court pressure here, Bob. Yeah, and again, Coach Russell does a really nice job making adjustments out of a timeout. And 2-2-1 two, two, full court pressure. He has a ton of experience in this game. and You can see that in the way he shifts around defenses and his athletes respond. As shot put up there by Osenfor and good on the three. Needed that. Osenfort, she's got a pair of threes this game. Now Allen going to have a clean look all the way to the rim. Threw up a shot, foul called, and Allen's going to be going to the line. Also starting to see Central kind of work through the pressure on the other end and end up with some easy opportunities in transition. As Allen good on the first. That was Annie Rain's third foul as well, should mention. Off on the second is Izzy Allen. Ponies working with 20 seconds remaining here in this third quarter of action. Annie Rains has it. See if they play for one shot. Well, as I say it, Kimball takes a look. Off the mark. Battle for the rebound. Was taken away by Olsen Ford and the Ponies. Knapp continuing to battle, but knocks it out of play. It's going to go back to Central. 6.2 on the clock. Mary Allen going to check back in with only having one shot opportunity. Izzy Allen has it. Three on the clock. Looking for her spot. Steps it back. Off on the mark. 39 Central. 26 ponies. That's how this third quarter of action is going to end. We're going to take a break and rejoin you for the fourth. 
I truly believe that if you're going to do something better, you got to start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Sluggers Baseball and Softball Training offers a variety of classes and leagues to expose you to a wider view of the game. Sluggers leads the way in baseball and softball training with industry-leading technology such as hit tracks that combines a traditional batting cage experience with modern analytics, all from the virtual diamond of your favorite ballpark. Check out Sluggers today on Facebook, schedule online, or call 207-951-2250 to start your journey with the best training staff around. Excellence starts at Sluggers. Welcome back here to Central High School as we prepare for the fourth quarter of action. Ponies, there, they trail by 13. Foul trouble, not a major issue. Both sides able to escape that quarter without too much foul trouble. As a shot put up there off the mark. Knocked out of play by Central. Going to remain Ponies ball. Ball played in. Nearly stolen by Allen Olsen for it. High arcing shot, makes it for three. That's a big time shot by Sam Olsen for it. Keep her team battling in this one. Izzy Allen, speaking of battling, trying to get all the way to the rim. And she's going to end up with a foul there. Trying to get, trying to go after the loose ball, get another opportunity for her team. <coughs> but that's going to be her third. Yeah, it's only the third team foul against uh, Central. So. That situation, not a bad aggressive foul, just uh, didn't come with the ball in that situation. Coach Jamie Russell calling out different style of defense. One man-to-man -man defense, wanted to match up here. And Olsen Ford, she's feeling it a little yep. bit, took a kind of a quick three on that attempt. Rebounded by Riley Speed before being played into Pinkham. I've, unofficially, again, I have to say, but I have Riley Speed down for nine rebounds in this one. Just been all over the place offensively, making things happen defensively and second chance opportunities for her team as well. Through the hands of Pinkham, but still ends up with it. Knocked out of play by Kimball and the Ponies. Gonna stay central ball. 7.01 early into this fourth quarter. 7.01 remaining on the clock. Speed, she plays it into Mary Allen. Guarded by Annie Rains, who has three fouls. Actually, both players have three. Izzy Allen in the post-up opportunity. That's going to come before. Right, they're going to give it to her in oh. the end one there. Izzy Allen in the post-up opportunity. That's going to come before. Right, we had a great vantage point on that one. First play, I thought that might have come a little bit before the shot attempt. But either way, it's two points. One more pending from the line for Izzy Allen. Legs were bent, but she was really into the act to shoot it. So I, I think good call by the official in that situation. Yep. And it ends up being the three-point play. Austin Fort, she has it, gives it up to Nat. Ducks inside to Annie Rains. One shot, one dribble pull up, I should say, before being rebounded by Allen. Now working in transition. Good defense by the Ponies. Able to slow that transition opportunity. Mary Allen to Izzy Allen. Speed back to Mary Allen. Nice duck inside. Post-up opportunity going to work on the low post. Nice duck inside. Post-up opportunity going to work on the Nice post move on the interior by Izzy Allen. Adds to her impressive night. More importantly, adds to the lead here. Now up to 15 with 5.57 remaining in the fourth. That ball was tipped around, ended up in the hands of Annie Range. She gets the easy two. I think you look at Izzy Allen from this year in comparison to last year. She's so much stronger this year. Physically, can finish around the basket a lot better, too. And I think it's really, really improved on her strength in that regard. Yep, and I've got her down for an even 30 points on the game now. 30 of the team's 44. Izzy Allen does account for Trying to make some space along that far bench over there. Ball played into Mary Allen. Ducks ahead to speed, one more pass. 
Opportunity at the rim. Nice defense by Kimball. Tipped away and stolen away. Great defense by Kimball in transition there. With Shaw, who had the right idea there, just not quite able to get complete control of it. Step through by Kimball. Both sides battling hard for every loose ball and rebound opportunity. Ball thrown ahead just out of reach of Mary Allen. Going to be a turnover headed the other way. 44-31 with 5.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. That's going to be a fun and really deep Class C girls tournament this year. It is indeed. And you're seeing an example of why Abby Knapp, offensive rebound, gets her first two points of the evening. Now she's been battling with some uh, foul trouble, but still trying to make things happen for her squad. Mary Allen over to Witte, looking for a potential post-up opportunity, but good defense by the Ponies. Olsen for it, went for it. Speed back to Mary Allen. Central electing to be a little bit more patient here, and that's going to be a foul against Annie Reigns, her fourth, team's fourth. So neither side <coughs> nearing necessarily the one and one situation. Gray checks in, replacing Witty for Central. But you look at that Class C girls tournament, so many good teams this year and so many different teams that, you know, Penobscot Valley comes after you with athleticism, length. Obviously, you know, Hodgson with uh, Anna Oliver. You've got Central with the Allen girls and, and Riley Speed. Madden Allcook's got good size. Dean Dexter's Dexter. They're going to try to make it a, a rock fight, and they play great defense. And then Fort Kent's solid. So that, that's just going to be a really good, deep um, C girls tournament this year. Yeah, as you saw there, turnover by the Red Devils turns into free throws at the other end for Annie Reigns as that went against Mary Allen, her fourth as well. So both number ones in tonight's action each have four fouls. Back rim off the mark on the first attempt for Annie Reigns. Second attempt from the line. Off the mark as well, rebounded by Izzy Allen. She gives it up off ahead to Mary Allen before getting it back. Going to go all the way to the rim, earn two more points. 4 2 remaining. That's to an impressive night for Izzy Allen. And if this one stays the way it's headed as Paige, opportunity at the rim off the mark. This one stays the way it is right now. Izzy Allen definitely a leading contender for our player of the game as Paige comes away with a steal. Hard contact, and that's going to be an intentional foul, actually, hmm. against Izzy Allen. That, hmm. What do you think on that one, Bob? I, that might have been a situation where the contact might have outweighed the intent, potentially? It's contact, but I, I thought she... I thought she played the ball. She might have attempted to play the ball. I'm just wondering if maybe the contact was above the shoulder region on the foul itself. Oh, that shouldn't really play a factor into it, if, whether or not it's an intentional foul. We have an Allen wanted clarification on the call there, continued the conversation, and you don't want to pick up your fifth with a technical foul of some sort, as uh, good on the free throw is Paige. It's not a technical foul, but it essentially acts the same. Right. Page off on the second attempt. The only difference is now Foxcroft's going to inbound the ball under the basket because it's where the, where the foul occurred. On a technical foul, you would inbound the ball opposite the, uh, the, uh, si on the sideline opposite the bench. Absolutely. At midcourt. And both Allens, Mary and Izzy, both have four fouls in this one. And Mary Allen does come away with the rebound there. Turnover, though, taken away by Osenfort. The Ponies, they're not done in this one. Kimball takes a dribble, takes a shot. Off the mark, Mary Allen does come away with it. She's got six rebounds. Mary Allen now has it. Look for Central to try to massage a possession or two here. Try to take a one for a high block. set yep. here for Central. Looks like the Ponies are going to try to look for an opportunity to double if they can afford it. That's going to be a foul against Olsenfort. Coach Jamie Russell in the 
Central bench wanted an intentional on that one as well. Once the game reaches its later stages, you start to see the intensity level ratchet up for either side, especially in a rivalry game such as this. Riley Speed, all the same, going to be inbounding the ball here for Central. Plays it into Izzy Allen. Cross court to Mary Allen. Definitely can see the Red Devils working for a solid possession there before the foul occurred. Still not free throws yet, but on the next foul will be there. And that one goes against Paige, her third. Timeout going to be taken here. And we're Fox Soft Academy is going to call. They're going to have one left after this. Yep, and we're going to keep it here to take this opportunity to thank some of the sponsors who have helped make these broadcasts free and accessible for everybody. Black Bear Cranes, a family-owned and operated crane and rigging service provider located in Herman, covering the state of Maine with cranes from 27 to 240 tons. From roof trusses, HVAC units, steel and precast erection, to modular home communications equipment. Call 977-BEAR today. If you need a vehicle, contact Sonny, Sean, Brian, or Ryan at Hartley's. Easy financing available. Great selection of new and used. Call 207-368-5751. Maine Mapping Company provides all of your land surveying, geomatics, engineering, and mapping needs throughout the state of Maine. Centrally located in Dexter, Maine Mapping provides boundary, topographic, and aerial surveys, as well as constructional surveys, survey services statewide. Visit us at www.mainemappingco.com or check out our Facebook page to get more information or request a quote. So thank a you little, to them. Got a little clarification on the technical file. A, an official friend of mine from northern Maine, Message me that if the contact is above the shoulders, rule book says that they do need to call an intentional foul. As yeah. Izzy Allen knocks in the three there, Bob. And that's if the official deems that the contact was excessive. So I do stand corrected, and I appreciate the... Uh, I will admit when I am wrong, and that's why they're wearing the stripes <laughs> and I'm not. And they are always very good at it. Big credit to the officials across the state. We need as many of them as we can get. And if you have any interest in becoming an official, I highly recommend doing it. There's not enough of them out there. <laughs> Foul in transition here. Actually, it's going to be called a travel. So 49-34 our score. Stick around at the conclusion of this one. If it stays the way... It, the score is at the moment Izzy Allen's leading the charge for our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game and we'll try to get a conversation with her or whoever ends up being the Bangor Savings Bank player of the game at this at the conclusion of this one along with the head coach of the winning side player control foul going to be headed the other way Two twelve remaining we'll see who this one goes against that's against Olsen Fort her third. So Annie Reigns has four. Paige has three. And now Olsen Ford has three with 2-12 remaining. Either side's going to play as hard as they can for the remainder of this one, you'd have to assume. Good job by Central. Able to battle through the pressure there. Continuing in the half court. And that's going to be a foul going against Kimball. Free throws coming for Riley Speed. One and one situation for Riley Speed coming from the free throw line. I gotta give a lot of credit to Riley Speed. She does a lot of the things that don't always jump off the stat sheet, the dirty work, rebounding the basketball super well, high intensity defense. She's taking some charges out here tonight, earning second chance opportunities for her side. Done a great job out here. Off on the front end of the one and one. Kimball in transition now, going to take the pull-up shot. Strong off the mark, rebound taken away by Riley Speed. I got her in double digits, rebounding the ball now. Battle for the ball is Mary Allen and a couple of ponies. It's going to stay central ball, it looks like. Actually, I stand correct, it's going to be ponies ball. 146 remaining. I must have missed one too. Yeah. Either that or the session over didn't get changed, one or the other. 
I trust them more than us on that one, so I'm going to say we, we might have missed one. Yeah. Olsen Fort, she has it now. Takes a drive, shot the rim off the mark. Speed adds another rebound. Izzy Allen to Mary Allen. Going to look to close this one out with 130 remaining here. Foul going to be coming here, you'd have to assume. Central doing a good job keeping the possession alive. Nice take to the rim by Madison Pinkham. Yeah, Central's done a really nice job closing this game out, too, and really extended the lead here late in the ballgame. That they have. Annie Rain, she adds two more. Expect to see some fouls coming here if they can get them, but Madison Pinkham's going to have a layup opportunity blocked away by Annie Rains. She's had an impressive night as well here, Bob. Takes a shot at the rim, off the mark, rebound, Witty. Foul going to be called, and free throws at the other end are coming for Alexis Witty. So with 53.3 seconds remaining in this one, Mary Allen checks out. I think it's safe to say the score stays the way it is with under a minute left to play. I think it's fair. Izzy Allen's going to be the player of the game in the uh, night she's had tonight. First attempt from the line. Off the mark from Witty. Austin Fork comes away with it. I'll get the final scoring numbers tally for her at the conclusion of this one. As Paige takes a shot at the other end. Rebounded by Witty. Pass ahead, up to Riley Speed. Wide open in transition, layup is good. <laughs> Riley Speed, six points on the night. Iver down for 11 rebounds. Could be more, as again, unofficial on my end. Olsen Ford has it now under 20 seconds left in this fourth quarter. Annie Rain's gonna take a look at it, makes a three. So they're not going anywhere. They're going to battle to the end here. Yeah, 15 in the ball game for Reigns so far. An impressive night for sure. Izzy Allen has it over to Madison Pinkham. Going to take a look at it too. Izzy Allen, the rebound off the mark. Ball batted. Clock's going to expire here. That's going to do it. 53-39. Bob Beatham, my broadcast partner. I thank you. He's going to go try and grab Izzy Allen and Coach Jamie Russell at the conclusion of this one. I'm going to tally up some scores. We're going to send it to a quick break and rejoin. I truly believe that if you're going to do something better, you got to start by innovating. Think about how to solve for a customer problem in a way that's quicker, different, and more customer-centric. The bank's promise has been fundamentally the same from the beginning till now, and that's ensuring that all that we do is making the lives of our employees, our customers, and the communities better. And it's their better, not what's defined as our better. Welcome back here. We're going to get Izzy Allen for post game here. Hi, Izzy. Hey. You've been here before. You've done this song and dance, but you are our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game. Thank Congratulations you. to you. Thank you so much. I had you down for 35 on the game. Uh, five plus rebounds. I'm sure it was more unofficial on my end there, but <laughs> 35 points. And this is a team that you guys battled tough with last time up at Foxcroft. Coming into today, you know, second day in back-to-back in -back for you guys. Last night, a good night for you. We'll get into that. <laughs> but two games in a row gets two tough clubs. What was your mindset coming into this one? You know, we knew this was a really good team, and we had to pick up our intensity and get ready for this because, I mean, they're a great team. Um, we knew it was going to be a rough one. It wasn't a very pretty win, but I think we got it done, and I'm proud of the girls. Yeah, and 35 from you. Kind of get into your mind a little bit in your game. What was working for you offensively out there? What were you seeing on the court that you were trying to take advantage of? Uh, my three wasn't really open, not really falling, so I decided I needed to get into the paint, try to do some post-up moves, um, especially when I have a height advantage on my defender. Um, I think that worked best for us tonight, and uh, I think it went well. Yeah, and this game tonight you obviously did great, but I, I wouldn't be doing it just if I didn't ask about last night as well where you eclipsed the 1,000-point mark in your career. Um, I want to get into your mind again and kind of talk about what does it mean to you, you know, you're the third member of your family here at Central High School to do it, um, your brother Simon and sister Sydney as well. Um, what does it feel like and what were your emotions like last night and now having reached your 1,000-point mark? Uh, it was a very emotional night for me for sure. Um, 
it's something I've looked forward to as a kid. Um, <laughs> that's what I've worked towards to. That's my that's been my dream my whole high school career. So it was awesome, and all the support I got that was amazing. The community coming out, everyone supporting me. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it for sure. Yeah, it, it's great to hear. Um, you guys are in a very tough class C. Um, <laughs> we coming into the game, we had you guys at fourth in heel points. That was a big heel point game, actually. Foxcroft at seventh in Class B. Um, as we enter this later part of the season, where do you feel a win like this and some of the wins you've been stretching together has you guys feeling momentum-wise, and what's your mindset as you enter this final part of the season? You know, these are the games we need to win because this is what it's going to be like at the cross center. We're going to play a great team. Class C is amazing. You're correct. Um, we got a lot of competition out there, and these are the games that are going to make us ready and prepare for those hard games where we're going to play against teams that are just, you know, high caliber. And you're very well spoken, very good player. We <laughs> thank you for joining us again. Our Bangor Savings Bank player of the game, Izzy Allen. I'll take the headset from you thank and you, you can so get much. back with your team. But thank you for joining us. Thank you, guys. And we want to thank all of you at home for joining us on this coverage of Maine High School basketball. Thank you again.